In hypothyroidism, hypo refers to having too little and thyroid refers to thyroid hormones, so hypothyroidism refers to a condition where there's not enough thyroid hormones. Now, as treatment for hypothyroidism, we can use thyroid hormone analogs as a replacement to supply the body with normal levels of thyroid hormones. There are two different thyroid hormones, triiodothyronine, or T3, and thyroxine, or T4. They're two tyrosine-based, iodine-containing hormones that are secreted by the thyroid gland, which is located anteriorly in the neck and consists of two lobes that look like two thumbs hooked together in the shape of a V. Now, if we zoom into the thyroid gland, we'll find thousands of follicles, which are small, hollow spheres whose walls are lined with follicular cells, or thyrocytes. Zooming in, these follicular cells have an apical side that surrounds a central lumen filled with a viscous fluid called the colloid. The colloid contains the precursor hormone thyroglobulin. The basolateral side of follicular cells is in contact with blood vessels that supply these cells. Now, synthesis of thyroid hormones inside the follicles involves a few important steps. First, the inorganic iodide ions, present in a low concentration in the blood, are actively taken up by the basolateral side of the follicular cells along with two sodium ions via a sodium iodide symporter. This step is known as iodide trap. The iodide ion is then pumped into the colloid via the pendrin protein, where it undergoes oxidation with the enzyme thyroid peroxidase, or TPO, which changes it into an organic iodine atom. It's then attached to tyrosine amino acid residues, which are found throughout thyroglobulin. This step is known as iodination. Some tyrosine residues are bound by only one iodine, whereas others are bound by two iodine atoms, yielding monoiodotyrosine, or MIT, and diiodotyrosine, or DIT, respectively. These molecules are then coupled together by the same enzyme thyroid peroxidase, or TPO. This process is known as coupling. Coupling one MIT with one DIT creates T3, while linking two DIT molecules creates T4. In general, T4 is created in greater amounts than T3. T3 is the more active form, with a half-life of 1 to 2 days, while T4 is the less active form, with a longer half-life of 6 to 8 days. Now, production and secretion of thyroid hormones is under the control of the hypothalamus-pituitary axis. The hypothalamus, located at the base of the brain, secretes thyrotropin-releasing hormone, or simply TRH, which stimulates the anterior pituitary cells, called thyrotroph cells, to release the thyroid-stimulating hormone, or TSH, into the bloodstream. TSH then travels to the thyroid gland and binds to the TSH receptors located in the membrane of the follicular cells of the thyroid gland. When TSH binds to the TSH receptor, it goes on to promote every aspect of T3 and T4 production, ranging from the iodide trapping to the release of thyroid hormones into the bloodstream. Once released from the thyroid gland, most of the T3 and T4 travel via the blood, by binding with the thyroxine-binding globulin, or TBG, to reach the target cells. Alternatively, small amounts of T3 and T4 stay unbound, and therefore they are referred to as free thyroid hormones. Only free thyroid hormones are physiologically active because they are able to enter the cell. Now, once inside the cell, T4 is mostly converted into T3 by the enzyme 5-deiodinase. T3 binds to thyroid hormone receptors, which are within the cell's nucleus, and these receptors regulate gene expression, which ultimately lead to various metabolic and physiologic effects in the body. This increase in metabolism uses up sugars and fats for energy and produces more body heat. Thyroid hormones also help activate the sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for the fight-or-flight response. This increases heart rate and cardiac output, respiratory rate, and mental alertness. Thyroid hormones also increase the gastrointestinal motility, and they are necessary for normal neuronal development in growing fetuses and young children. Now, there are three types of hypothyroidism, primary, secondary, and tertiary. In primary hypothyroidism, the thyroid gland is the problem because it isn't making enough thyroid hormones. 
Iodine deficiency can be a cause of primary hypothyroidism because the follicular cells don't have the iodide ions they need to produce T3 and T4. In countries that do fortify food with iodide, the most common cause of primary hypothyroidism is Hashimoto thyroiditis, an autoimmune disorder where T cells and autoantibodies like antithyroid peroxidase and antithyroglobulin infiltrate the thyroid and cause follicular cell damage and inhibit normal thyroid function. Primary hypothyroidism can also happen after treatment for hyperthyroidism, which usually involves surgically removing the thyroid gland or destroying it with radioiodine therapy. Now, in secondary hypothyroidism, also called central hypothyroidism, the issue is that the body doesn't produce enough TSH. TSH is a really important hormone which stimulates the thyroid gland to uptake iodide from the circulation and produce T3 and T4 when needed. It typically happens because there's a tumor in the anterior pituitary which compresses the gland and prevents TSH production, which leads to decreased level of T3 and T4. Finally, in tertiary hypothyroidism, the hypothalamus doesn't produce enough thyrotropin-releasing hormone, or TRH. As a result, these individuals have decreased levels of TSH and subsequently decreased production of T3 and T4. Another form of hypothyroidism is congenital hypothyroidism, which is defined as thyroid hormone deficiency present at birth. It can occur due to an absent or underdeveloped thyroid gland, which is known as thyroid dysgenesis, or due to an ineffective production of thyroid hormones, also known as thyroid dishormonogenesis. A person with low thyroid hormone levels typically has cold, dry skin, cold intolerance, hair loss, weight gain, and constipation. They might also suffer mental symptoms like lethargy and fatigue. In infants and children, hypothyroidism could delay physical and mental development. Now, in some elderly individuals with low levels of thyroid hormones, any stressful event like an infection or a heart attack can lead to an acute decrease in T3 and T4. This leads to a medical emergency known as myxedema coma, a rare condition associated with clinical features such as sudden drop in body temperature, low heart rate, low blood pressure, hypoventilation, confusion, and coma. Okay, now in a person with hypothyroidism, we want to increase the T3 and T4 to normal levels, and if the hypothyroidism is due to iodine deficiency, the treatment is to give foods rich in iodine, like fish, eggs, meat, and iodized salt. On the other hand, in individuals with primary, secondary, tertiary, or congenital hypothyroidism, the treatment of choice is to give synthetic thyroid hormone replacements, or thyroid replacement therapy. Now, the synthetic hormone that's similar to T3 is called liothyronine, and the one that's similar to T4 is called levothyroxine. Both liothyronine and levothyroxine are usually given peroral, but can also be given via the intravenous route. Of the two synthetic thyroid hormones, liothyronine is shorter-acting but much more potent, meaning it's able to treat the symptoms of hypothyroidism at a lower dose. Since it's a T3 analog, it could directly enter the target cell and take effect very rapidly. This is why intravenous liothyronine is the drug of choice in emergencies like myxedema coma. Its high potency also leads to more severe side effects, which are the same as hyperthyroidism. This includes heat intolerance, anxiety, diarrhea, tremors, and tachycardia, which may lead to cardiac arrhythmias. That's why liothyronine is contraindicated in individuals with heart conditions. On the other hand, levothyroxine is much less potent but longer acting. Just like natural T4, when it reaches the target cells, it first needs to be converted to T3 by the enzyme 5-deiodinase. Due to this, levothyroxine takes effect much slower than liothyronine, and individuals may require 6 to 8 weeks of therapy to achieve a normal T3 and T4 level. Levothyroxine is the medication of choice in the long-term treatment of hypothyroidism, but also in the treatment of hypothyroid individuals during pregnancy. It's important to note that the dose of levothyroxine should be increased once the pregnancy is detected, because during pregnancy there are high levels of circulating estrogen, which increases the concentration of thyroxine-binding globulins. And more thyroxine-binding globulins means less free T4. 
Don't forget that the thyroid hormones are also important for normal fetal development. After delivery, the levothyroxine dose should be reduced to the dose that was taken before the pregnancy. In contrast to liothyronine, the hyperthyroidism side effects associated with levothyroxine are less severe, but the elderly, individuals with cardiovascular problems, and individuals with long-standing hypothyroidism are at risk for developing cardiovascular side effects. These individuals have an increased sensitivity to stimulatory effects of T4 on the heart, thus they should start the treatment with lower doses and gradually increase it to prevent cardiovascular side effects. Now, moving on to major interactions of levothyroxine with other medications, which can be subdivided into several groups. The first group includes medications that decrease levothyroxine absorption, such as iron, calcium, aluminum hydroxide, proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs, sucralfate, and bile acid binding agents, like cholestyramine. Since they are associated with decreased absorption, individuals treated with these medications require higher doses of levothyroxine to achieve therapeutic effects. The next group covers medications that increase thyroid hormone metabolism, such as rifampin, phenytoin, and carbamazepine. Just like with the first group, these individuals require higher doses of levothyroxine. Next, we have medications that increase the concentration of thyroxine-binding globulins in the blood, such as estrogen, raloxifene, tamoxifen, heroin, and methadone. More thyroxine-binding globulins in the blood means less free T4, therefore these individuals also require more levothyroxine to achieve therapeutic effects. On the flip side, the last group covers medications that decrease the concentration of thyroxine-binding globulins in the blood, such as androgens, glucocorticoids, anabolic steroids, and slow-release nicotinic acid. In other words, less thyroxine-binding globulins in the blood means more free T4, so these individuals require lower doses of levothyroxine. Finally, it's important to note that propranolol inhibits the enzyme 5-deiodinase and reduces the conversion of T4 to T3. As a result, propranolol favors the less active form of thyroid hormones, T4. Therefore, individuals on propranolol also require higher doses of levothyroxine. Another indication of synthetic thyroid hormones is TSH suppressive therapy. Let's put it this way. Some conditions, such as thyroid cancer or thyroid nodules, are TSH-sensitive, meaning they grow when there are high levels of thyroid-stimulating hormone in the blood. In TSH-suppressive therapy, synthetic thyroid hormones inhibit the secretion of thyrotropin-releasing hormone, thereby reducing the secretion of thyroid-stimulating hormone. Now, more specifically, liothyronine can be used to prevent the growth of thyroid nodules while levothyroxine can be used to prevent the recurrence of thyroid cancer. Since thyroid hormones stimulate bone resorption and bone remodeling, long-term treatment with thyroid hormones can cause osteoporosis, but they can also worsen glycemic control in individuals with diabetes. Finally, thyroid replacement therapy should not be used to treat obesity or cause weight loss. Now, as far as the contraindications go, thyroid replacement therapy is contraindicated in individuals with uncorrected adrenal insufficiency. This is because thyroid hormones increase the hepatic metabolism of glucocorticoids, which are hormones produced by the adrenal glands. Now, in adrenal insufficiency, adrenal glands are unable to increase glucocorticoid production and compensate for increased turnover. Ultimately, this can precipitate adrenal crisis. So, it's important to note that individuals with hypothyroidism should treat adrenal insufficiency before hypothyroidism. Other preparations of thyroid hormones used to treat hypothyroidism include liatrix and desiccated thyroid. Liatrix is a synthetically made mixture of T4 and T3 in a 4 to 1 weight-based ratio. On the other hand, porcine-derived desiccated thyroid, also known as thyroid extract, contains a mix of natural T3 and T4 hormones derived from pigs. However, it's not as reliable as the synthetic hormones since the amount of T3 and T4 in each dose could vary, which leads to unpredictability in its potency and duration. Both liatrix and desiccated thyroid are given orally. Alright, 
As a quick recap, when treating hypothyroidism, iodine deficiency can be treated by giving foods rich in iodine. If the cause is thyroid or pituitary damage, synthetic or non-synthetic thyroid hormone replacement therapy could be used. Liothyronine and levothyroxine are synthetic forms of T3 and T4. Levothyroxine is the drug of choice for treating chronic hypothyroidism, while liothyronine is used for myxedema coma. Liotrix is a synthetically made mixture of T4 and T3 in a 4 to 1 weight-based ratio. Non-synthetic thyroid hormone replacement uses porcine-derived desiccated thyroid, which is a mix of natural T3 and T4 derived from pigs, but its effects are much less reliable when compared to synthetic thyroid hormones. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.